morning. That was a long. <laughs> Look who I got, y'all. Yes. Pastor Franny is back in effect. I miss you guys. <laughs> miss you. Anyway, um, hello to all our great people. We are so excited uh, to be here with you this morning. Today is Relationship Wednesday. Uh, and I'm excited about the word, man. I want to talk today about the, the three different levels of relationships. Um, I think I talked about this once before, but I want to kind of dig into them um, a little bit more in the practical today. So, man, we're excited. Uh, my wife is excited. She's back. Excited to see you guys. Uh, we're excited because this is Super Sunday week. Um, on this Sunday, we are going to pay off our building, 87000 right, right about $87,500. If it's a little bit more, I'll take care of the difference. <laughs> so don't worry about that. But uh, we're believing God for eighty-seven thousand five hundred dollars um, in, in in this this offering. People have already started sewing into it. If you want to give into the sacrificial offering already, um, it's you go to www.ltmorlando.org forward slash give, um, and right there you'll see building sacrificial seed. Uh, and what we're believing God for, and this is what I want to talk before we get going, is we're believing God that this is a seed for the generation of debt-free homes. We believe that this is the seed for the generation of debt-free homes, debt-free churches. We believe it is the will of God for the body of Christ to own their churches. And we want to be the example. We want to be the trailblazer of that to pay off and own a home debt free and allow our people to sow into our building being debt free believing and expecting god for them number one to be homeowners and then number two to pay their mortgages off so whatever you need favor on whether it's owning a home and literally taking possession i believe that this seed is going to be the connector to the favor to get you into a home. And then secondly, I believe this seed is gonna bring the faith pressure for you to pay your home off in the favor of God to come to pay that house off. I just believe that. And if you have a church, it's the same way. If you have a church, sow into this church building. Because if you have a church and you want your church building debt free, the Bible says sow your good seed and good ground and we are good financial ground to sow it to. So anyway, let me uh, let me pray and we're going to get, you want to pray? Pray we get right into the word. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for this day, Lord. Thank you, Father, for everyone that's here and present this morning, Lord, seeking you, Father. So seeking you should find, knocking the door should be open unto us, Lord. Father, I just thank you, Father, this morning for relationships, Lord. I thank you, Father, this morning to get an understanding of the holy of holies, the upward song, the downward song, for Father, and how vital it is. And I just thank you, Father, for it right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, we love you guys. I normally do the shout outs. Uh, I'm going to skip that this morning because we got a lot to cover. Uh, but anyway, I just want to shout everybody out. Love you guys. I'm thankful for each and every one of you that joined the broadcast. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you. We appreciate you being here uh, to support us, uh, we, to support the broadcast, to share the broadcast, to tell a friend about the broadcast. We also appreciate all the seed uh, that you've sown into Winning in the Word uh, so that we can continue to do what we do here and further uh, this and allow it to get into more people's hands. So today I want to talk about the three types of relationships as a born-again believer that God wants us to have. First of all, we need to start off with the premise and the understanding that God has called us all from before the foundation of the world to be leaders. You are called to be a leader. There is someone on this earth that you have been called. God has specifically put you on this earth to specifically and individually impact somebody's life. God has put you on this earth to specifically and independently be a blessing to be an impact in someone's life, okay? So we've all been called to be leaders. So what that means is as leaders, we all need some vital things. The first thing that we all need is we need an upward relationship with someone on earth that we can respect, that we can honor, and that we can receive from that we can respect, that we can honor, and that we can receive from. 
Then we need our peer relationships. Our peer relationships are the relationships that, that those are our friends. We bounce things off of. We have fun discussion. We agree to disagree. Those are our friends. And then lastly, we have our downward relationships which are downward relationships are the assignments that God gives us for the people that when we're receiving from our upward relationship, as we receive that and we implement that that we've received and become strong in that that we've received, we now sow downward to release because there must be a release because as there's a release, now you can then be enlarged. Some of you can't be enlarged because you're not releasing. You're, you're taking all this goodness and everything that, that, that you know, if you're, you're in our church that we're sowing into you and you're not taking no time to release that into nobody else. So therefore you just stay full and eventually what's in you will get rotten and spoiled because we're designed by God to release. So I want to talk about those three specific things. Um, areas. Now, I want to start off with Ephesians 4.32, and I'm going to have Pastor Franny read this in the Amplified, and I want you to understand every relationship that we have, whether it's an upward relationship, a peer relationship, or a downward relationship, should be built on this scripture, okay? Right. Ephesians 4.32 in the, you want me to read it? Can you read it? Yeah. Ephesians 4.32 in the Amplified. Pastor Franny's got to get some new glasses. It says, and become useful and helpful and kind to one another. And become useful and helpful and kind to one another. So no matter what relationship we have, upward, peer, or downward, we should be kind, we should be helpful, and we should be useful. We should be kind, we should be helpful, and we should be useful. Now, kind, it doesn't mean we let people walk over us. Kind doesn't mean we never correct people because correction comes, especially when you have an upward relationship, right? But it also goes on to say tenderhearted, compassionate, understanding, and lovinghearted, forgiving one another, not one another, readily and freely as God in Christ forgave you. So let me read that one more time. This is the foundation of all of our relationships and become useful and helpful and kind to one another. Tenderhearted, compassionate, understanding and loving hearted. Forgive one another readily and freely as God has forgiven you. Amen. So this morning, I want to talk about the upward relationship, the upward relationship. The upward relationship is a relationship that God puts you in to receive from someone. Now, I'm talking up to you. OK, um, you God has created people on the earth. Um, we call them mentors. We call them pastors. Um, we call them our, you know, our boss, our leader. God has created people that are in authority over you on the earth realm that have been put there for you to receive from. See, we've gotten this deep revelation now. Pat, it started out with pastors. Pastors now, when they get to a certain level, they don't need to receive from a man no more because now they hear from God not biblical pastors have gotten to the place now well i hear for god for myself i'm grown i got my my own message god has given me no god hasn't given you anything special you're not special the bible says he's the same today yesterday yeah and forevermore yeah now god has given you influence and put word in you that's going to influence others and you need to connect with those people but we all me and my wife are submitted we have people above us that we allow to speak into our lives. Our members don't speak into our lives because that's not what they're called to do. We're called to pour into their life. You need to get a revelation of what I'm talking about today because it will help end a lot of confusion with a lot of these relationships that you have. You have some relationships that you're supposed to be pouring into and you're sitting around listening to what they have to say. 
And you've been called to build them up and to pour into them. You have some peer relationships that you're allowing to have a greater voice in your spirit than the upper relationships that God has put in your life. I am telling you, when you get a revelation of these relationship levels and how these relationships should operate, a lot of confusion is going to go out of your life. So in the upper relationship, it's you should always be in a posture of receiving. When you're when I go sit with Pastor Deborah, when I go sit with Bill, when I go sit with the people, Clayton Reed, Bob Ingalls, the people that God has put in my life, whether it's in ministry, I got I got upper relationships in business, I got upper relationships in friendship, and I got upper relationships in our spiritual growth. I have them across the board. Because I'm not talking to my upward relationship and friendship about what goes on at the church because he doesn't he doesn't know any of that. I'm not really talking to my business relationships about the church. That's an upward business relationship. But when I'm speaking to these people, it's a posture of honor. It's a posture of I am listening and taking notes. I'm not talking. I call them with a challenge. I talk to them. Hey, here's what's going on. I need some counsel. And I shut my mouth, right? My wife, my wife has watched me over the years do this. But you know, today, a lot of people are so built up in pride. They have a hard time calling and asking for help from anyone. And it, it, it really, really is going to hurt life because there's people that have already done what you're trying, have already accomplished what you're trying to accomplish. And it, it leads to isolation. It leads to depression. It leads to loneliness. It leads to a will. I, I know women that struggle in our church raising their kids or or in their marriage, and they got my wife, and they they won't they won't reach out. They're waiting for her to reach out to them. That, that's that's the wrong order. It won't work because that means you're not coming in the right posture. And if you don't think posture is important, go study Jesus. Go study all the people that received miracles from Jesus, they came with the right attitude, the right posture. They knew who he was. Number two, asking for understanding when you're, when you're in this upper relationship, not questioning, knowing that you are the lower vessel. The minute you're in an upper relationship and you think you're their peer, or you think you have something to say to them, you, the, the relationship's done, it's done. You need to move on and ask God who, you know, who needs to be speaking into your life. When they speak into your life, and at this point, that's, it means no debate. Right. But they say you receive. Yeah. Because what, they've been there. What, they have experience. Well, yeah, it's this right here, right? What they speak into your life should have what? Wait. What they speak into your life should mean something. What they speak into your life should have weight to it, right? Why, why is this possible? Why do I got to do it? Because folks are trying to save you some time. Time is your most valuable asset. And if you're having to figure everything out and feel, I don't have to, when I go talk to Pastor Deborah about ministry challenges I have, I don't have to wonder, does she have my best interest in heart? If I go talk to Pastor Ron Holmes about something that's going on in ministry, I don't have to wonder, does he have my best interest at heart? Him and Pastor Gina, they've been doing this a lot longer than I have. They know what they're doing. So I don't, and I know they love me <laughs> and I know they honor me. I honor them. I mean, I understand that Dr. Rick Layton, if I got a question, Pastor Ezell, I got ministers that have been doing this for 30 plus years that are friends of mine, but I honor them. I, it's an upward relationship. Um, you must honor this person. In other words, you must, what they say must have weight and you must look up to this person. And you should often pray for this person. When you're praying for the people that you honor, when you're praying for the people that are in your upward relationship, it keeps the relationship in the right place. It keeps the relationship in the right place. And when you go out with them, if you go to dinner, if you go to lunch, you should always pick up the check. They should, it shouldn't even be a question. Do you know that I have been with my spiritual parents for 
probably going on close to 30 years now, 25 plus years. And and when I tell you, Pastor Paul don't eat at McDonald's. Pastor Deborah don't eat at McDonald's. We eat at expensive restaurants. Do you know that I can sit here today and tell you they have never, how do you spell never? N-E-V-E-R. They have never, ever picked up a check when they were with me for food, for a cab ride, for a car rental, for a hotel room, for an air flight. Never, ever, not one time. Why? I honor them. I honor them. You know, I'll tell you a quick story because we're not going to get on to the rest of them. But one time, Pastor Poe, invited me out for a boat ride and i'll never forget it man i had my wife put put 500 on her debit card uh this is back in the days when i was broke we took the little bit of money we had saved i put it on the debit card i said man pastor poe invited me out for a boat ride um i believe it's the will of god for me to fill the boat up for me to pay for the gas because i had to pay for something i had to honor him i got to pay for something he pulls the boat up there and he starts filling up the boat I'm sitting there watching. I've never filled up a boat. I didn't. I don't know nothing about a boat. Um, man, that thing is ringing ding. 300, 400, 500, 800, 1,000. All I had was $500 on my debit card. The fuel was like $1,400 for the day. Well, the good news was I knew I missed God. It wasn't for me to fill the boat up because I didn't have the money to do it. So what did I do? I bought lunch. When we docked and we went to lunch, I had enough to buy lunch, so I bought lunch. I always honored him. I always honor Pastor Deborah. Why? Because that's when I go out to lunch with my friends that, that are my upwork group, I, I pick up the check. Why? Because I'm appreciative of their time. Amen. So listen, we only got through the one today. There's also a downward relationship that we have. And that's where we are now in the, instead of being in the posture of receiving, we're now in the posture of sowing. We're sowing downward. I want to talk about that one. And then there's our peer relationships. I want to talk about our peer relationships. So next week on Relationship Wednesday, I'll try to finish these two. But I love you. I just want you to know, my wife and I want you to know, that relationships are important. And understanding the structure of the relationship is most important because that's going to allow you to get the greatest return and the greatest value out of that relationship. Amen? So it's Pastor Nick, Pastor Frank saying we love you. Please be praying this week about the sacrificial offering. Whenever you want to sow, if you're online, you can go to ltmorlando.org forward slash give um, and go to sacrificial seed. Sow it there. That money is dedicated and designated to pay off the building. That's all it can be used for. Um, we're going to take everything we received this week from winning in the word is going towards paying the building off. We are believing God this week that as you sow sacrificially, and sacrificially means you're going to sacrifice something. But as you sow, we are believing God that it is going to be a seed that connects your children's homes for being paid for, your homes for being paid for, generations of debt-free homes, not mortgages, debt free homes. It's also going to be a connection to those who've never been a homeowner. This seed is the seed to bring the favor of God to get you into home ownership. For those that never own their church, still have debt on their church, consider sowing into this vision. And I'm going to believe God for your church to be debt free. That's what we're believing for. Debt freedom. You cannot be financially bound and spiritually free. We want you to be debt free. We're believing God for those sowing, you know, tens, hundreds, fifties, thousands. Uh, we're believing God for, we've never had a $20,000 gift in our church. I think the Lord, no, 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 we have. No, no. We've never had a 30,000 because we, we had the 25,000. We've never had a $30,000 gift. We're believing God for the largest one-time gift ever. Um, we're believing for you to sow the, the largest you've ever sown, but whatever that is, if your largest seed is $20, we're believing God, you're going to sow 40. If your largest seed's a thousand, we're believing that you'll sacrifice and sow 2000. We are believing God. It is going to take the move of God for this to happen. We've never received a seed of this size, but we are believing by faith and we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Each and every one of you. 
for all that you do to allow this ministry to be the help that it is to people. God bless you. We love you. Until tomorrow, tomorrow's Prayer Thursday, Pastor Nick and Pastor Franny saying, enjoy life. Thank you.